again. I wanted to show you a little bit about this unit here uh, had two. So this was a two voice synthesizer. You could play two notes at the same time. It's a pretty nice synth. Each one of these, he referred to them as SEMs, Synthesizer Expand the Module. Kings Highway, Brooklyn. Uh, Sam Ash music, brand new. I've had it all these years, it's a nice machine. Now what's also cool about this machine, besides having the two analog modules, complete analog synthesizers, one here, one here, we also have this very cool analog step sequencer, control voltage step sequencer. So uh, we're going to change the camera angle, zoom right in on this thing, and uh, you'll just see my hands and me pointing. Uh, this is going to be fun. Here we go. This is an Oberheim synthesizer from the 1970s, and. Um, it's a two-voice machine. This unit right here is one complete analog synthesizer. This unit here is a sequencer. We're going to go over the components, and then we'll uh, listen to what this thing can do. Okay, VCO1, this is your oscillator. VCO2, another oscillator. Frequency control, frequency control. If you want to modulate, change the frequency uh, with some other device, alter the frequency with some external device, like an envelope generator, an external device, literally external to the synthesizer, or a low frequency oscillator, you choose it right here with a switch. No patching necessary, all done with switches. Uh, VCO2, same exact functionality. Another envelope generator can affect this, an external source or a low frequency oscillator. This dial here controls the amount of the change, and I'll show you that in a little bit. In other words, if you pick the low frequency oscillator, how much will it affect the frequency? We'll get back to that. Then we have the uh, voltage controlled filter. These oscillators are routed to the filter with these little pots right here, very simple. Saw wave from this goes to this filter. Pulse wave from this goes to this filter. Saw wave from this goes to the filter. Pulse wave from this goes to the filter. Again, no patching. Um, again, because there's no patching, our routing is limited, but um, you know, for your basic synthesizer needs, this thing does a lot of cool stuff. So anyway, we would wrap that, let's say two saw waves from these two oscillators going to this filter. Here's your frequency, here's your resonance for the filter, this is your cover frequency, the resonance for it. Now with this uh, Oberheim filter, um, with this Oberheim filter, we don't get the same effect we get with the Moog filter, that, that self-howling effect, uh, that, that feedback effect that uh, the Moog filter is famous for. Um, you don't get that with this. But other than that, it's a great sounding filter. It's really cool. It lets you alter it from a band pass, low pass, into a notch, into a high pass. So you can sweep through all of these different types of filters. Envelope generators. We talked a little bit about these in the other tutorials. This affects uh, whatever you route it to. And typically, one envelope generator is affecting the amplifier of this machine. In other words, it's going to change the volume of the output. But you can also route it so it affects the pitch. Or you could uh, route it to affect the filter. And we have two of them, which is also sort of a common thing. What's weird about this one is there's an attack, decay, sustain but there isn't attack, decay, sustain, release. Typically in analog synthesis, we have a four position ADSR. Attack, decay, sustain, release. This has just attack, decay, sustain, but the decay is actually also the release. What I mean is, this really is an attack, decay, sustain, release four stage envelope generator, but whatever you set the decay for, the release also is automatically set for. Anyway, let's re review what an envelope generator does, okay? This is 
the attack rate, the rate at which the voltage uh, increases in this device. This is the rate at which uh, the voltage that rose from the attack will fall. The sustain is the level that voltage will stay at so long as you hold down the key after it's gone through these events. And then release is the rate at which the voltage will drop after you let the key go. Uh, we got attack, decay, sustain, and then release. So the voltage rises. It maybe falls to whatever the sustain level is. And then will fall back to zero for sure, depending on the rate of the release. This voltage output, if it's sent to the frequency, will drive the pitch up, down. It'll stay at a pitch and then fall off. Same thing with the filter. The filter, imagine if we have a slow attack, will slowly open. And then, let's say we have a mid sustain point will slowly open, it'll then slowly fall to whatever level that equals, and then when we let go, it will go back down to zero. So I'm going to apply modulation that's more obvious to the amplifier. This one right here is going to the VCA, voltage controlled amplifier. You hear it slowly rising. In volume, right? And it stays, comes up, came down a bit, and levels off. Now, it's going to take it this long. Remember, decay is the same time as release on this. So, when I let go. Did you hear it fade out? So now watch. I'm going to give us a quick attack. Quick attack, quick decay, no sustain. It should sound sort of like a, a ticking sound. Let me take off our echo unit here. Hear that? Make it a little louder. Right? Now if we increase the decay, it will take longer to fall down to this zero sustain level, so it'll make more sound. Sustain level zero. Now watch this. I raise the sustain level. It stays at that level for as long as I hold down the key. Let's apply it to the filter now. Okay? So we route it. It's envelope two. And we send it here. Okay? Okay? It's opening that filter. Okay? Make it slower. And uh, now the sequencer. Here it is in sample and hold mode. I just can't get enough of that, actually. And there you have it. 